So is the Denver market really crashing? Now, I know you've heard the rumors, the whispers, the scary headlines that the real estate market is crashing. However, are we on the verge of a crash or is it just a bump in the road? So let's buckle up. I'm gonna go through everything and separate fact from fiction. There have been so many ups and downs with the real estate market, especially with labor shortages, supply chain shortages, and increases in interest rate. Buyers and sellers had no idea what to expect with the coming housing market, especially during the COVID times back in 2020. We saw some crazy appreciation during that time and who knew that would happen? And millennials have seen some crazy financial crises from the 2008 crash to COVID to the illiquid banks. But I digress and let's go back to the housing market. From the year 2020 to about 2022, a lot of people wanted to get into the market and hold on to that 4%, 3% or even 2% interest rates. And at that 3% interest rate, that's pretty much free money at that point. Buyers these days are having a hard time justifying buying a home in this market. Oftentimes buyers that already have a home already have that lower interest rate. And selling their home at a really low interest rate and now buying a home at a really high interest rate means that they have to come out with another $1,000 per month. And it all depends on the mortgage payment based on the home price, insurance, taxes, and all that good stuff. But you understand what I mean, right? And it's just really tough because a lot of these same buyers have seen that early 2022 market where interest rates were at that three to 4% and now we have to work with 7%. Now zooming out a little bit more, there has been no shortage of demand here in the Denver market. And the Denver population has increased approximately 1.3% every year for the past 70 years. So what is the main problem here? Why are buyers having a hard time buying and sellers having a hard time selling? I want to say that the common theme foundationally is that there's just a lack of inventory. Sellers don't want to sell for the same reason that buyers don't want to buy right now. It's because they don't want to get rid of their lower interest rates in order to buy a home at a really high interest rate. Developers are not developing fast enough and especially with the labor shortages and supply chain shortages that have been happening over the past couple of years, they're still playing catch up. And the population is still increasing over time so inventory just hasn't caught up to that demand yet. So with the limited amount of sellers on the market right now and the amount of buyers that really want to buy right now, especially with that hard motivation factor, let's say for first time home buyers, it just creates this stiff competition for all of the buyers right now. However, if you're looking for an agent that still writes offers that catches the seller's eye all while protecting the buyer at the same time, look no further. I've been navigating this hot seller's market for the past couple of years and I'm still landing these sweet deals for my clients. Whether you're a buyer or a seller, I know how to navigate it and I work in this full time. Contact me in the description below so that we can start your journey and make sure that you're well prepared to navigate through this crazy market here in Denver. Let me speak to the first time home buyers specifically right now. Some of my clients have a potential property to sell prior to buying the next home. In order for them to qualify in their next home, they have to make sure that they sell their current home in order to get proper financing, the proper amount of down payment for that new property. That means the offer to buy a new home is contingent on the sale of their first home. And to the everyday seller, this might not sit well with them because that's just another thing that they have to worry about in order for that deal to go through. So that means in order for the deal to go through, they have to sell their original home. So that's sort of a, a pretty big loophole here. If the buyer of the new home doesn't sell their home in time, then they're not gonna get financing and the deal will fall through. So that's a big yikes in my book. So first time home buyers have an advantage over these types of buyers. They don't have another house to sell. They could just put down as much as they can, whether it's three and a half percent for an FHA loan or 5% down for a conventional loan and try to buy that property without having to have to sell their original home or sell a, a different home. That means they could be solid buyers if they already have a pre-approval with the lender of their choice. If you're a first-time home buyer that's kind of scared of the interest rates going up, thus your mortgage payments going up, we have some strategies here that work out in this 2023 markets that I've been implementing for my clients. For example, we can negotiate a 2-1 buy-down. What that means is that for the first year that you own the home, you have a 2% discount on your interest rate. So let's say you have a 7% interest rate that you locked in, 
the first year will be at 5%, so your mortgage payment will be significantly lower the first year that you live in it. The second year, you will have a 1% discount, so you'll have it at 6% interest rate. And then on the third year, you have that 7% interest rate, which is the one that you locked in. And that's what you saved up for and what you're prepared for. So if you saved enough money over years one and two, you're prepared for year three, especially with bonuses, raises, or maybe a new job along the way that you get an increase in pay as well. Or we can find out ways to generate income on your property. For example, if you were to live on the main floor and have the bottom floor or the basements operate as its separate units, you can get about $2,000 a month just for renting out that basement. And me coming from California, it blew my mind that we had basements here in Denver. Or if you don't want to share that living space, or if you don't want to even share the same roof as another person, I would say rent out the garage. Oftentimes people rent out the garage for like 300 bucks a month and that's not bad. And the whole concept of like renting out the basement or renting out the garage for a certain amount of money is called house hacking. And I'm a veteran in this department and I've been doing it for the past three homes that I've owned and operated. Hit me up if you're interested because it definitely helps out with your living expenses. But going back to the market trends, what I found really interesting was this big shift of buyers in the buyer pool right now. Based on the latest report by the National Association of Realtors, or NAR, as of 2022, baby boomers are the largest demographic in the buyer pool, beating out millennials for the first time since 2014. Baby boomers now consist of approximately 39% of people that are trying to buy a home in this market where the year previously, they were only about 29% of the buyer's pool. And so since 2014, people aged from 24 to 42, the millennials have been the biggest buyer in the buyer pool. In 2021, we had about 43% of the buyers in the buyer pool being millennials, but as of 2022, it went down to 28%. So why is that? The National Association of Realtors Deputy Chief Economist, Dr. Jessica Lout says, baby boomers have generated enough equity over time in order to propel them to be buyers in this market. Baby boomers are repeat buyers who have seen some significant appreciation in their homes already, which propels them to be awesome buyers in this market. Which totally makes sense because there have been some significant appreciation over the past couple of years ever since 2019 or 2018. So now with that appreciation, the baby boomers can now use that same equity to buy their new home. So now with all that money going from an old home into their new home, that means the loan amount is much smaller and they're not as worried about the interest rates. When typically for like a millennial or a first time home buyer, they're putting down like 5%, which means their loan amount is like 95%. And with that larger loan amount, now they have to pay more interest payments and the mortgage is gonna be higher. Also, what I think is interesting is that baby boomers have seen more economic cycles, so they're not as worried about the market as, let's say, a first-time home buyer. They're probably more confident that the market will be settling or decreasing over time. They just have seen this before and they're not too worried about it. Which comes to show you that the best time to buy a home was 20 years ago. But I'd say the second best time to buy a home is literally right now. Time in the market always beats timing the market. So if you want to be in a position like the baby boomers are right now, you just got to get in the game. You got to buy a home and learn how to manage that mortgage appropriately, which is why I'm such a huge advocate for house hacking. It might be a struggle at first, but with appreciation and inflation, usually houses go up along with it. And with inflation as it is right now, and the government just constantly printing out money, I would say that we're not going to be seeing any decrease in home appreciation anytime soon. Now let's go into the Denver specifics here. I see that a lot of homes that are priced right and in the right neighborhood, and they look great as well, they're flying off the shelves. Those types of homes are actually getting picked up within the first weekend on the market. And it usually follows this trend where it has coming soon on Wednesday. It finally gets released on the MLS, Zillow, and Redfin on Friday. You have open houses and showings on Saturday and Sunday. And then by Monday, all contracts are at a deadline. So this type of scheduling was seen back in early 2022, but now we're seeing it in 2023, even with these really high interest rates, it's crazy to me. 
So other homes that don't fit that criteria of not priced right, not in a good condition, or not in a good location, they usually sit on the market for like 30 days or more. And that's when a lot of my buyers swoop in because at that point, sometimes sellers are just more motivated to sell and work with your terms versus what they were initially wanting. And this is where I come in as an agent. I wanna make sure that we're getting the best thing for your buck as a buyer. And uh, I try to make sure that we see what the seller's needs are so that we can find a happy medium, but make sure that you come out on top. And as we get into the summer months, things are picking up here with a lot more people not wanting to move or sell during the winter time. This is the prime time to do it. So more inventory is hitting the market right now because more people are willing to move during the summertime. And active listings are picking up over time. As we get into the summer months, we're seeing an increase of listings about 2.3% month over month. And the average days staying on the MLS is quickly decreasing as we go into the summer months. Back in February 2023, we were seeing the average days on the market was approximately 47 days. But as of April of 2023, we're seeing homes stay on the market for only an average of 27 days. Now, just to give you a taste of what it was like back in early 2022, back in April of 2022, days on the market was only nine days. It was an insane time and I don't think it would be that hot in the near future. But that was a time when interest rates were around 3%, so it was a frenzy back then for a lot of buyers. I think the general buyer pool is getting used to the higher interest rate. And to be frank, I don't think the interest rates are going to be lower than 4% in the near future, maybe within the next three years. So there's not much I can guarantee after that three years and even before three years, I can't guarantee much. But I would anticipate that we're not going to be seeing those 4% or lower interest rates uh, within the next three years. For the foreseeable future, I can only see Denver's popularity going up and to the right for the next couple of years. The mountains aren't going anywhere. The big tech scene is getting up in Boulder and also within the city of Denver. And the city of life is only getting more exciting over time. So let me give it to you straight here. I do not foresee a housing crash coming, especially here in the Denver area. The demand is really high, the supply is really low, and the house prices are increasing because of that. So now it's just a simple supply and demand economics lesson. Now, I don't think we're gonna be going into like a 2008 financial crash either because borrowers are getting more strict guidelines and regulations in order for them to be approved for a certain loan. Lenders and banks got severely burned during the 2008 financial crash. And new regulations prevent anything like that from happening again. I don't know what will happen in the near future, but back in 2008, I don't think that specific issue will ever happen. All the signs are saying that the housing market here in Denver is just increasing and the demand is still increasing, which is why I'm still buying here in Denver as well as an investor. So if you're curious about the Denver market in specific or just curious about the cool neighborhoods in Denver and what has seen more appreciation than other locations, hit me up and let's talk. Shoot me an email, give me a call. I'm one of the few millennials that enjoy phone calls these days. So I am looking forward to hearing from you and I really hope you enjoyed this video, especially with the Denver housing market situation. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week.